What is up and welcome back to my course on Photoshop for landscape photographers. Whether you have watched the whole series or just tuning in for this video, I'm incredibly excited that you are here. In this video, we're going to be talking all about advanced masking uh, tricks and tips and how to do advanced masking in Photoshop. If you haven't watched the basic masking video that I posted a couple weeks ago, I'll link that here. Definitely want to make sure you understand all the concepts there first before jumping into this video. If you need a little refresher, go watch that one again and then come back here. Um, but most notably in this video, we're going to be talking about luminosity masking. Now, if you've been a photographer for long, you've probably heard the term luminosity mask thrown around or spitballed around, um, and it is something that is incredibly powerful and something that you need to understand how to use. You can do little like mini luminosity masks in Lightroom, but you don't have nearly the control or capabilities that you do um, here in Photoshop. So I want to show you guys how to do that today. Let's go ahead and jump right in there into Photoshop. This is the image we're going to be working on. This makes for a great image to use luminosity masks on because there's a high tonal range in the image. We've got some brights, um, some brights, and then we've got some darks and some darks and a little bit of everything. So you can make luminosity masks if you want in the um, filter, no, I'm sorry, in select and color range, um, and then using highlights, midtones, and shadows. But to be honest, this is a really tough way to make luminosity masks, in my opinion. Um, so for that reason, I'm going to recommend that you download a quick panel before you do this. Um, the panel is the TK panel. It's totally free to download now here on Photoshop. I'll briefly show you how to get that started. So go ahead and click plugins. Click on browse plugins. Should bring you to this. Um, you can type in TK panel. And then you can scroll down to where it says plugins. And then you want this TK luminosity mask panel. Uh, this is made by Tony Kuiper. Sean Bagshaw teaches a lot of courses with this panel. I think they're just fantastic. And this panel is so great and so easy to use. So you should be able to click on that and then install this into your um, Photoshop. And then once you have that done, you might have to relaunch. I'm not quite sure, but you'll load back in, go to plugins, and it should be right here. TK Luminosity Mask, and then TK Loom slash Mask will open this. Now you want to click and drag this over into the right side of the screen here. Um, and now we have our TK Luminosity Mask panel, so we can click on that. Now you're probably looking at this saying there's only two options. How powerful could this panel be? I am going to show you how it works today. Now remember again, if you need a refresher, check out uh, a video a couple weeks ago. I covered layer masking, but remember that black conceals white reveals on any layer. Um, so we're going to be doing the same thing with luminosity masks. It's the exact same thing. Anything that's black on a luminosity mask hides the layer. Anything that's white shows it through. Um, so just remember that. Now in this image, uh, let's just say first thing I wanted to do is just lift up the very darkest spots on the image. Sure, you could go and lift the shadows, but that's going to increase the brightness of almost everything in the foreground because everything is going to be considered in that shadows range. But let's say we just wanted to bring the very, very darkest parts of the image up um, without doing anything crazy like a brush. It's This is very easy to do with a luminosity mask. So how this works, make sure you're selected on the photo layer. Click on this button here. That creates the luminosity mask. Now we're looking at it. Don't worry about these layers. They'll go away once we select uh, what we want. Now you've got a lot of numbers here. Anything uh, left, one, two, three, four, five, six, going to the left, getting darker, is going to select the shadows. Anything one through six on the right is going to select highlights. Anything one, two, three on the bottom is going to select the midtones in your image. Now later in this video, I'll show you one practical use for the midtones, but to be honest, I don't use midtones very frequently, um, so don't worry about those too much. But you do need to worry about the shadows and the highlights. This is going to be how you selectively choose spots in your image. You'll notice right now we're on a highlights one, uh, which selects a lot of the bright parts in the image. But as we go up in numbers, it gets more and more selective to where we're only selecting the absolute very brightest spots on the image. So now remember, this is going to create a layer mask. So what we're seeing right here is creating a layer mask, just like we could do with a brush, except it's based off of our image, so it's a lot more specific. So in this example, I want to select and brighten some of the darkest spots in the image. Remember, anything that's white, uh, whatever adjustment I apply, which I'm going to apply a curves so I can increase the brightness, um, that curves layer, when I increase the brightness on the curve, the whiter something is in the luminosity mask or layer mask here, the more it's going to receive the effect. So I just want to lift those very darkest of the dark um, 
darks in the image. Um, and so I'm going to make something that's pretty selective. We might go with like a darks five or darks four. Let's go with darks four so we can see it happen a little bit better. So now that I've selected this mask, you can see it's not selecting anything in the sky at all. And there's various spots in the foreground that are being selected with these really dark areas getting the most selection and things like the brightness on the cactus is not getting selected. Now we have options here for different kinds of masks. To be honest, I know what most of them do, but not all of them. Like I couldn't tell you what this hand does, um, but I'm sure I could figure it out. But you don't need to know what all of these do. So don't confuse yourself. All you need to know here is this opens up curves. This opens up levels, which I don't really recommend using levels. It's basically just the same thing as curves, just not as powerful. Um, and then this last one here opens up a brightness contrast or not the last one. The middle one opens brightness contrast. This opens hue saturation. Um, this opens it as a selection and then this applies it to the layer that you are selecting or the, the layer that you selected when you opened the luminosity mask. Now I would say at least 50% of the time you're just going to want to select a curve. So I've got that, uh, shadows for selected, click on the curve and this should open up a curves layer with that layer mask. You can see it's right here. We'll hold alt and option and click. You can see the layer mask is now applied to the curve. I can close that down. Now when I adjust the curve, look at how it's just adjusting the very darkest spots in the image. It's not affecting the sky at all. It's just affecting the darkest spots. Just like how that other video we were making layer masks with brushes, this is the same thing. It's just creating a layer mask based on your photo, based on the lightness values in your image specifically. So it's a really powerful tool to, like in this example, to bring up the shadows of the darkest spots. Now we can use this to do the same thing to maybe pop the cactus here. So maybe I'll go ahead and do that. Open up a layer mask, click on the button again, going to make a good selection of the cactus. Um, and I'm going to probably mask out the sky. So I'm not too worried about that, but I want to get just a good selection of the cactus. Maybe either two or three is probably pretty good. Let's go two. It'll work in a little bit quicker that way. Actually, no, let's try three first. Maybe we'll go back. So then we're going to create a curves layer just like that. Now we can bring this up. You can see that pops and it might be hard to see depending on what resolution you're watching this in. hopefully in 4K, but if 1080, that's fine. You can see we can bring up the brightness or we could even bring it down of just that one area that we're making a selection of. Now, the only problem when I do this is I'm seeing, okay, it's adjusting the sky too. And maybe I don't want it to adjust the sky. So there's a couple things you can do. Click on the layer mask. You could use a brush and just paint that out. I like to stay organized though. I don't want to paint on this layer mask. So I'm going to create basically a layer mask on a layer mask. Now, hopefully that's not too confusing, but just imagine it's a layer mask to mask another layer mask. It's just two on top of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and create a group. Then we can drop this into the group. It'll be like indented over. That's how you know it's in the group. And now on this group, I can create a layer mask grab my black brush, make sure it's black, blend mode on normal, big size brush, 100% opacity. Now I can just paint this into the sky. So now anything that's in this group, this is listening to this layer mask. So it's only going to apply to things that are um, in the white. Now, sure, could I have made a more uh, accurate mask? Yes, but it's not necessary because this layer mask here, I basically just want to make sure it's just selecting the cactus. So because I've merged it with this layer mask now, you can't see them merge together, but you just got to know that it's working for you. You can see now when I toggle this before, and after it's not affecting the sky at all. So that's a little trick that I like to use to combine layer masks. Again, if the two layer mask thing is too confusing for you, you can just paint on the original layer mask with a brush, just paint that out. Um, but I like to stay a little bit more organized. So I do something like that. Now you can really go to town making adjustments wherever and however you want. This is a great way to make selections. For example, maybe I wanted to increase the saturation of the brightest spots in the image. Let's click on the group here, make sure we're on top. Um, this might still create in the group, but we can drag it out. Create a layer mask button. I want to add some saturation to the bright spots in the image. Let's go with maybe a two. We'll click on the hue saturation and then we'll increase the saturation. So you can see this is just applying to the brightest spots in the image. Now, if I was feeling like, okay, maybe the sky's too getting, getting too overcooked. I just want this to apply to the foreground. You could drop this into the group. There can be multiple layers in a group. 
just like that. So now you can see I'm brightening and increasing the saturation of the foreground layer there. Now you can use this technique on so many different things here as you're editing. Like I said, these layer masks can be applied to more than just the layers that you're seeing here. Again, you can click this button, which will apply it to say you had like a photo layer with a blur or an Orton effect or something on it. You could apply a luminosity mask to it that way. Uh, if you had like a some kind of an image blend, you could use luminosity masks to do the blend. There's just so many options of what you can do with luminosity masks. Anywhere you can apply a mask, you can apply a luminosity mask using uh, this option here or just make it as a selection. Um, and if you do make it as a selection, when you click on a layer, like, okay, let me just show you an example. This will be easier. Uh, we'll do a, a lights too. We'll click this button to make it as a selection. Um, now you can't see the selection on the screen, but this red box indicates that there's a selection made. If I was to click on my photo layer here and click on layer mask, you can see it would apply um, that layer mask. Now it's going to make my photo look not very good because there's nothing below to see through. But I just wanted to kind of show you that example um, there. I will undo all of that and go back to where we were. Now one thing that I will show you. A lot of people talk about in landscape photography this idea of midtone contrast, which is adding contrast to the midtones in the image. You do that with a luminosity mask. Super simple and easy, guys. Click on that luminosity mask button. Select whichever midtones you want. Um, basically, the difference is just how much do you want selected. Three would give you the most, one would give you the least. Let's just go with two because it's in the middle, and why not? We'll create a curves layer. Then just like you would in any other program with curves, you can create an S curve to create contrast, just like that. And this creates contrast. Remember, because we're using this layer mask here, it's only creating that contrast or it's creating more contrast in the spots that are lighter. This is just like a layer mask. It's not creating the contrast in the spots that are darker. So these really bright parts in the sky aren't getting affected at all. So this just creates a little bit of contrast in the midtones. It actually looks really nice on this image. Um, so that's something that I may roll with going forwards. So with luminosity masks, you can see we've really helped to pop this foreground. So you can see not only have we added more detail by bringing up the darkest of the darks, but because we've also brightened those really bright spots, we've kind of made them pop a little bit and stand out with really bright sunlight. So that looks really nice. We've combined the layers together. Um, so that was very easy to do as well. So remember, you just create the group, throw the layer mask on there, and you can combine it all together. Uh, that is also really helpful if you make a layer mask and you want it to, like, let's say you make a layer mask of the sky, uh, a luminosity mask. You can apply it to a group, and then you can put however many adjustments you want within that group um, to then make them all have essentially the same luminosity mask because the layers that are in the group are going to not only listen to the layer mask that's attached to them, but also what is attached to the group as well. So my final word of advice here, um, again, I like this TK luminosity panel. Um, don't worry so much about all of the different buttons. Truly, once you open the luminosity mask panel, all you need to worry about is selecting the correct uh, luminance value, I guess would be the right word for it. And then all you need to worry about is what kind of layer you want to create. Again, I recommend use that curves, use the hue saturation, and then use this button to apply it to the layer that you're selected on. Um, if you need to do that. But 99% of the time I'm using curves or hue saturation. Um, and then occasionally I'll use one of these two on the bottom. But usually it's just one of these two it's because I'm increasing the brightness or decreasing the brightness or I'm adding contrast or I'm making adjustments to the color. You can do it all with just that. You don't need to be too confused. I wouldn't recommend, there is a lot of pa uh, premium panels on the market. You can spend a lot of money on these panels that have so many different features. I honestly use this one for teaching because I can show people uh, how to use it. Um, it's very, I believe it's free, uh, but if it's not free, it's very affordable. Um, and it's very simple to use because there's not a thousand different features and so many different things you can do. It's just very simple and easy to use. So I would really recommend using this TK Luminosity mask panel to create um, all of your layers here. This is really going to help you to unlock some of the power of Photoshop once you understand this. And again, if this was confusing, make sure you check out the previous uh, video where I talked about the basics of layer masking. All right, hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Hopefully that was enough examples. Uh, I'm not somebody that's just gonna show you examples forever and ever and ever. I like to kind of teach you a concept and um, move on with it. I know there's a lot of videos out there where you can look at examples all day long, um, but hopefully this makes sense and this showed you everything that you can do uh, with those luminosity masks. If you have questions, let me know down below. 
Um, otherwise, if this video moved a little fast for you, pause and play, try it on your own as you go work alongside with me and really get a feel for it. Um, but really, I want to make these videos as clear and concise as possible. So hopefully you found that it was like that. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back next week with another uh, Photoshop video for landscape photographers. If you guys have any questions or recommendations in the meantime, let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, thank you so very much for being here. Um, this is Austin James Jackson. We'll see you guys next time.